This is the Sideline Distant Podcast coming to you from Los Angeles, California. I'm Bradley Whitaker coming to you from audio form only. You can still find this on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, Facebook, Twitter at the Brad Whitaker. Uh, yeah, no video today. My camera is still struggling a little bit, but uh, you know, nothing that hasn't been happening before. I just can't play for more than 12 minutes at a time, but I do get to test out this new software, which allows me to control my music and everything I'm doing at the same time, see? Pretty cool, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Today, I'll be talking about uh, NFL Week 10, give you my spreads and predictions, Uh, but first, UFC 205 starts in just two days. And I couldn't be more excited. I just finished watching the uh, press conference. Obviously, all the talk is about the main event, Conor McGregor and Eddie Alvarez. Watching the press conference, and it got me thinking about what it is that makes the UFC so successful. You know, their two main competitors, obviously, are uh, boxing and world wrestling, professional wrestling, WWE, WWF, whatever the acronym is. Uh, but Conor McGregor is a great personality to have for the sport. Ronda Rousey, she was kind of the first big name before McGregor, even though McGregor's name was out there, um, maybe perhaps even before Rousey. But uh, what we've seen from Conor is almost this sort of Muhammad Ali personality, and you never know what you're going to get from his press conferences. You know, I would have never watched these UFC pre-fight press conferences Unless Conor McGregor was in it. You know, I, it's it's kind of boring, but McGregor forces his opponents to talk trash. And I'm sorry, Eddie Alvarez, he's the American McGregor's fighting. And, you know, it's a tough matchup for McGregor, and uh, he may be underestimating Alvarez. We'll see on Saturday night. I don't, I don't want to make any predictions about the fight. But when it comes to trash talking, which isn't in, important in a combat sport like mixed martial arts... Uh, you can really get into fighters' heads. Sometimes some fighters are better than others in that uh, regard. Jose Aldo, McGregor clearly got into his head. That's why he was able to knock him out after just 13 seconds. He was just caught, and we might see the same thing from Alvarez because Alvarez, <laughs> he's not a great trash talker. I'm not very impressed with him. Uh, he just kind of seems a little desperate. Uh, it's not like Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz kind of lives in his own little world in his head, and uh, Conor McGregor, you could tell it was a real challenge for him, and he likes challenges. That's why he fought Diaz twice, even though he didn't really need to. But what's made the UFC so successful is they've been able to develop these personalities, these authentic personalities, more than anything. People love Muhammad Ali because he was authentic. People loved Mike Tyson because he was authentic. Conor McGregor is authentic. I don't think Ronda Rousey really is, but we might see something new out of her. But the UFC is developing more and more stars. Misha Tate's name is huge now. Uh, But UFC 205 this Saturday, uh, this is a hyped event. Uh, It's not Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao. That's perhaps the most hyped boxing event uh, in the last two decades. Uh, But UFC is catching up, and it's catching up quickly. Uh, Professional wrestling is struggling because of the authenticity problem. And authenticity is good business, too. I mean, clearly, I don't want to get into the election. I'm still a little bit frazzled over the whole thing. But clearly, the American people picked Donald Trump because he came off as more authentic. Now, you don't actually have to be authentic. You don't have to be yourself. But as long as you come off authentic... That's what sells. You see, people aren't very smart. They don't. They don't know whether or not things are fake or not. Uh, obviously, everybody knows WWE is fake, and it's still been relatively successful. Uh, UFC. Some of the conflict between Conor McGregor and Eddie Alvarez at today's press conference may or may not have been faked, but it doesn't matter. It looked real. And I think because UFC, we know it's real. You know, once you're in the octagon and you're beating up the person across from you, uh, you know it's pretty real. It doesn't get any more authentic than that. And even if their personalities are faking these, 
you know, conflicts before these fights, which I don't think the UFC is, but they might. You know, I think President Dana White, he's... You know, Connor showed up, what, 10 minutes late to his press conference today? And uh, that was obviously staged. That was planned. And But it still came across as authentic. McGregor came out and said, I run on my own time, or whatever it was that he said. And, you know, it was silly, but that's what brings the fans in. And, you know, when somebody gets punched in UFC, if they get caught by a jab could affect the rest of the fight. In boxing, if you get hit by a jab, sure, it's I'm, it hurts more than I'm describing, but there's a reason they fight 10 to 15 rounds in boxing, and UFC only goes 3 to 5. And they can get in a lot of great fights in one night, and it doesn't take up any, everyone's time. And they're making a lot of money on pay-per-view. Uh, so UFC has that authenticity that boxing has. It's just more exciting because it's more physical. Uh, The results are more short-term. The fighters turn around quicker. You know, you'll see Conor McGregor participate in four four to five fights a year. That's unheard of in boxing. And, of course, authenticity. That's most important. And it's the reason why professional wrestling is almost dead. Because the UFC has kind of filled both of those demographics very... Both of those audiences... Uh, very quickly, at least in these last few years, and it's it's going to continue to grow. So that's it. I can only talk for eight more minutes because I'm using a software that is a free trial, but I think it's worth spending the 10 bucks. I like it. Uh, I'm going to quickly get through my Week 10 NFL spreads and predictions and wrap this thing up. Uh, so let's cue the music, and uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I can actually talk and play audio at the same time. So We'll start with the Thursday night matchup. Of course, another scintillating matchup tonight. The Cleveland Browns are going up against the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens are seven and a half point favorites. Very generous margin, but they are at home. Cleveland's a good team uh, for a team that's never won a football game. (laughs) Uh, I expect Cleveland to lose this game, but stay within the seven and a half point margin. So if you're betting on the spreads, pick Cleveland. Green Bay Packers, two and a half point favorites on the road against the Tennessee Titans. Uh, Picking Green Bay on the road is very difficult, even going against a team like Tennessee. But that the Titans are getting their pass rush, uh, excuse me, their running game together with Derrick Henry and Demarco Murray. Packers have a lot of issues. They lost the Indianapolis Colts at home last week. Uh, They made the Indy defense look strong. They're going to make the Tennessee defense look strong as well. Also, that song is only a minute long, so I'm going to have to keep <laughs> looping it. Uh, Minnesota and Washington. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm picking the Tennessee Titans in that game. Minnesota on the road in Washington. The Washington Redskins are two and a half point favorites. You know, I'm not quite ready to give up on the Minnesota Vikings just yet. Uh, they've lost two offensive tackles, but they've had a few weeks to pull it together. Granted, the Washington Redskins offense is probably the most productive in terms of yardage in the NFL. They lead the league in first downs. Uh, They're going up against a defense that they haven't seen before this season. So the Redskins are two and a half point favorites. I'm predicting a close one. Minnesota Vikings coming out on top. Uh, Chicago Bears one point favorites on the road in Tampa Bay. You know, Tampa Bay's had a lot of hard fought games and they've lost a lot of close ones at home. Chicago Bears turning things around. Jay Cutler uh, looks about as engaged as Jay Cutler is ever going to get. But you, I think the Bears are going to win in Tampa Bay on the road. I don't think that's going to happen. Bears one-point favorite. I have the Buccaneers winning by a field goal. Kansas City Chiefs on the road visiting Carolina. Carolina Panthers are starting to turn things around. They've now won two straight. Beat Atlanta, and they won on the road against the L.A. Rams last week. Uh, Carolina's a three-point favorite because they're at home, but that Kansas City Chiefs defense is going to give Cam Newton fits. If he holds on to the football too long, it doesn't look good for the Panthers. I'm going with the Kansas City Chiefs, perhaps the most under-the-radar team in the NFL. Atlanta Falcons, two-point favorites on the road, visiting the Philadelphia Eagles. and This is a very tough game to pick. 
Everybody loves Matt Ryan. They've fallen in love with him. He's improved his game a lot. He gets rid of the ball quick. He always has, but he moves around the pocket better. Made some great throws last week. Uh, but the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be a defense that they also haven't seen before. Uh, similar to the Minnesota Vikings and uh, Washington Redskins. Atlanta's going to go up in probably and perhaps their toughest match of the year in Philly. I don't think they're a good favorite. Even though it's only a two-point favorite, I think it'll be a close game. Uh, but the Eagles, as long as they make smart coaching decisions, which I don't think they did last week, nearly came back against the New York Giants. Uh, if it weren't for a few bad coaching calls, I think the Eagles would have won that game. I think they're going to win at home this week against the Falcons. L.A. Rams visiting the New York Jets. Jets are two-point favorites. I'm picking the Jets. The L.A. Rams are falling apart. Uh, I don't think it's time to go with Jared Goff just yet. I respect Jeff Fisher's uh, decision to stay with Case Keenum because he really believes that's the best quarterback to win football games. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, the Jets aren't a bad football team. Every team in the AFC East is competitive, and it's difficult that they have to go up against the New England Patriots. Uh, twice a year, all of those teams, and they're all great teams at home, too. Uh, even the New York Jets are tough to beat at home, that's why I'm picking New York. Uh, win by a touchdown over the LA Rams, Jeff Fisher going to face even more pressure to put Jared Goff in there after this week. Denver Broncos visiting New Orleans Saints. Believe it or not, the Saints are three-point favorites. I'm picking Denver. Trevor Simeon even though he's not a great road quarterback, he should be able to pick apart that New Orleans defense that, sure, they're more energized when they play in the Superdome, but I think Simeon's going to have a great game. And that Denver defense, while I don't expect them to stop Drew Brees, they can score more points than the other team. And, and that's how you win in football. That's how you win. You have to score more points than the other team. I think, you know, that people... People don't realize that a lot about sports is you have to score more points than the other team, and I think that's why the Denver Broncos will win. <laughs> Houston on the road against Jacksonville. The Jaguars are two-point favorites. Never been on the Jaguars. Pick the Texans. I have two and a half minutes. Need to wrap this thing up. I'll go a little quicker. Miami on the road in San Diego. Chargers are four-point favorites. I have the Chargers winning this one. Uh, you'll hear me mention this over and over again. The Chargers are the worst team in the AFC West. That being said, they are the greatest, worst place team in NFL history. They should have no problem beating the Miami Dolphins. Also a competitive team, but a much better team at home. The Chargers are at home. They're going to bounce back, especially after this tough vote. It looks like the Chargers are moving to L.A. The fans are going to be out to cheer them. I'm picking San Diego to win by a touchdown. Uh, Dallas and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Steelers are two and a half point favorites in the Dallas Cowboys. Uh... This is one of those situations where Vegas knows what they're talking about, as a lot of people like to say. P people pick trap games like this one, and Pittsburgh at home is a favorite against Dallas. I don't see it happening. I'm picking the Cowboys. Uh, still running out of time. San Francisco 49ers, 13 and a half point underdogs on the road against the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals are going to win by not that much. Uh, picking the Niners. Sunday night football. New England Patriots, seven and a half point favorites at home against the Seahawks. Uh, Patriots would probably be five point favorites if they uh, weren't coming off of a bye week, but because they're coming off of a bye, Seattle played on Monday night. They're seven and a half point favorites. The Patriots are seven and one against the spread this season. I'm not going to bet against them. I bet you they win by ten points. And finally, Monday night football is a pick 'em between Cincinnati and the New York Giants. Giants coming off a big win against Philadelphia at home last week. I think Cincinnati, they're well rested. They'll come in to New York or New Jersey and win that game on Monday night in a pick em. So that's it for today's podcast. Uh, I'll be back on video soon trying out this new software. It's called Spreaker, by the way, if you ever want to give it a try. I think it works pretty well. Uh, it's fun. I can just start playing music while I'm speaking, just like I am right now. I'm playing the wrap-up music, uh, but hopefully I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, sorry I wasn't there yesterday to my six or seven fans. Uh, my car was broken into. Uh, you know, you gotta make sure you lock your doors. My doors were locked, but park your car in a safe location. That's the right thing to do. 
Uh, so this is the Sideline Distant Podcast. I'll be back tomorrow. The day is November 10th, 2016.